chief executive of Etihad Airlines says he sees no issues with the contentious Open Skies Agreement. It comes as the U.S. legacy carriers call on Donald Trump to freeze U.S. route expansion for Gulf carriers. On last night's program, right here, you saw and heard the chief executive of United, Oscar Munoz, tell me that the issue of Open Skies and the Gulf 3 is not going away. The facts of the matter and what we as an industry domestically have to protect is American jobs. And there's a lot of folks involved in this process. And that is something that I take very seriously, as do my CEO peers. And, uh, and I think the facts are very supportive of an unbalanced playing field. And again, welcome the competition. Let's just make it a little bit more even. So this issue ain't going away? Not anytime soon. Now, Etihad is urging the U.S. to keep the skies open. It's forging ahead with partnerships airlines, in particular Lufthansa. The deal with Lufthansa for greater, for greater access, code sharing, maintenance, is extraordinary because Lufthansa had been one of the fiercest critics of the Gulf 3 in European aviation. It was Lufthansa that keeps calling for more regulatory uh, action to be taken against the Gulf 3. John Defteria spoke to the chief execs of both. Well, a big part of Lufthansa's heritage and a big part of Lufthansa's success have been built on partnerships, not only on the passenger side, but also in maintenance, in cargo, in catering, in other parts. So I think today marks another ele an important element of this. We strengthen our network by partnerships such as this. And this is good for us into Germany. We're keen to expand, but it's also good from Germany into Abu Dhabi and our network beyond. Uh, by the very nature of your business, you're both globalists. Do you worry about the retreat of the United States and what it could mean for your sector uh, going forward, Carson? Well, I think it's obvious that we in aviation are the good guys of globalization. We connect people, we put people together, and maybe in days like today, more important, we build credibility of globalization making this world a better place. Uh, James, uh, I would be very surprised if uh, President Trump didn't reopen the Gulf uh, discussion when it comes to the Open Skies Agreement with the Gulf carriers. Uh, do you have concerns that's going to happen? We were very clear in our response last year on the structure of Etihad Airways, how we operated under the Open Skies Agreement, and under the Open Skies Agreement, there are no issues. At the end of the day, you can only work with the issues that are in front of you. If those issues are raised again, we'll tackle them. But in the meantime, we have to continue to develop our network, to develop our partnership in the U.S. with American Airlines, and we're JetBlue, and move forward. Uh, he's considered a transactional president, ready to do a deal at any time. But the travel ban was quite shocking. As CEOs, how did you see it, Karsten? Uh, were you surprised by the move by the White House? I'm sure that there's no way about aviation opening the world further. And that will also happen, I think, in, with new administrations around the world. The agents on the ground here were outstanding in working with us because people were arriving and then discovering they couldn't travel on mm -hmm. is an issue. So addressing that issue now, in the broader picture, obviously we're both members of IATA, we're both on the board of IATA. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll address this as an industry and uh, we just have to work through this as we go forward. Candidly, though, it's almost like a shock and awe. You wake up almost every day and there's a new policy or a new approach. That yeah, must be the, difficult. But one of the challenges in aviation no, is, you know, whether it's economic, whether it's pandemic, whether it's government, these are issues we have to tackle. And at the end of the day, you have to absorb it. You have to ensure that your guest's impact is minimized, find a solution and move forward.